now still on the subject of databases, um, I want you guys to see an example of a database in action, of, um, of database marketing in action, uh, which will give you a better idea, I think, conceptually of uh, what you do with the database. Uh, we've talked about it, but I want to show it to you. And so what I'm going to do is um, the first year I taught the database marketing course in the spring, um, the project, and it's a workshop class like this, but the project uh, I gave each team was to build their own database um, using their personal contacts, uh, anybody they could talk into it, from Facebook, from whatever, um, try to build a database of 200 or 250 people, obviously very small, not big enough to do any testing with or anything. But again, this is just to, 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 to have them do the work and understand the principles. Um, and, um, and for the database, they needed to get first and last name, email address, and zip code minimally, and if possible, also age and sex and maybe hobbies. Um, they then had to, as a second um, project, um, append some kind of external database um, to find out more information about the people in their database, and a lot of them did zip code and then went to one of the um, secondary sources for understanding zip codes, which is something that I hope you guys did early on in this class when you shared your zip codes with everybody. So a zip code can give you an idea of average income, education, uh, home ownership, uh, ethnic background, average, that, uh, mind you. Okay, so then they needed to um, build a website and work with MailChimp, which is an email um, facilitating company, very good company. Um, and basically, they needed to send emails to their database, and hopefully they'd segmented their database too, by the way, based on, you know, whatever they could find out about their database. Maybe one segment is students, another segment is parents, but they had to have at least two segments. Had to have different creative approaches for each segment in the email, but they had to send an email to their database asking each person to go to the website that they built to answer three questions. I didn't care what the questions were, but they had to answer three questions. And then they had to track how many people opened the emails, how many people clicked the link to the website, how many people filled out the and answered all three questions. So I had one. Several teams did an amazing job. This team, I thought, was just did a stellar job. These are the names of the students. Morgan Deese, Haley Rizzo, Kelly Ritchie, and Karen Ruck. I'm going to thank them publicly for the really good job they did, and I hope they don't mind that I'm, I'm using their presentation because each team obviously had to do a presentation at the end of the class answering certain questions. So I'm going to take you through their presentation now to give you a sense of how database marketing really works. So first phase was getting contact information. And they did this by asking friends, family, etc. They also did a survey, uh, as you can see on Google, asking people for their info to start the survey, then posted a link to all their Facebook friends. And um, this was the survey. And they're asking about hobbies. And by the way, they had to build a relational database uh, with hobbies also linking to the back to the customers. So this is a survey that helped them get some more names and some more information. And then they created a database uh, in um, access and Right, basic information. Each person had a customer ID number. We talked about that. Then they referred to Prism, which is uh, a geographic uh, lifestyle database. And Prism has defined a bunch of different lifestyles. I don't know how many, 30 or 40 or more 
And um, these are some of the lifestyles, mobile urbanites, liberal, ethnically diverse. Um, Bohemian mix is the name of one of the lifestyles. Young and rustic was another lifestyle. Um, they looked at life stage groups also. Uh, a lot of their people were new homesteaders. Um, some of them were Middleburg managers. So this is based on zip code. And this was telling some of the hobbies. This, as you'll see, is similar to something we're going to see in a minute with the database I'm actually working with now for Choice Hotels. So they ended up concluding they had a significant division between uh, urban modern population and more rural old-fashioned population. So they decided to make a website that will intrigue people from both of the groups. So they really made one website. Um, they segmented customers geographically. Here are some parts of the, you see the northeast and here you see the southeast. Um, they tested some subject lines. Now, they obviously didn't have enough. They didn't want to test with their database. Um, they, they did their own survey to test the subject lines, uh, subject lines for their emails. And they just had to make some kind of judgmental decisions, but at least they went through the concept of testing options. And it looks like the, the winner was overrated, underrated. You tell us. And then they designed the website and the email campaign. And uh, these are some of the questions they asked. <laughs> so it was very much uh, sort of public uh, events and, you know, uh, very up-to-the-minute kind of fun questions they asked. Overrated, underrated, you tell us. So I honestly think that um, the creativity shown, again, I'm going to go back on this, in their subject matter and the questions they asked and uh, the fun they have with it, the sense of humor and kind of the charm of it is an example of not just satisfying um, the strategy of the Tabasco, but doing something really good creatively that's going to engage people. That's that sort of extra magic um, that you hire a good creative agency for. But to my mind, this is like professional quality work that these students did here. Okay, and now uh, they sent out emails, and now uh, let's see what they got. So of their total database, I forget how many they had in their total database, around 150. Um, 63 of the emails were opened. Uh, 23 of the 63 uh, clicked. I got it by region here. and. Um, so they had 14.6% of the total emails actually answered the questions, which is kind of amazing. Um, that looks like they had 156 uh, total emails, 156 in the database. So, um, this is a chart working with MailChimp helped them do this, you know, to tell you who, who clicked and uh, you had an unsubscribe, et cetera, et cetera. Okay, total openings, 101 clicks, da, da 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 And they had some information on desktop and mobile also, which of course is interesting. We can't forget that most people are on their mobiles these days. What did they learn? I asked them to, each team to talk about this at the end. <laughs> people enjoy talking about themselves, different subject lines. Okay, so obviously they had a small database. Um, they maybe wish that they had segmented by age rather than location. So this was an excellent, excellent project. And you see how a database is, is really used, hopefully, from quickly going through this. Now, I've also um, put in the content section a PowerPoint presentation of maybe 20 slides or so from one of my current clients. Uh, I work for a company, uh, I consult for a company called Hive, H-Y-V-E. The website is thinkhive.com, and Hive works with Choice Hotels. Choice Hotels is Comfort Inn, Comfort Suites, Econo Lodge. They have over 5,000 hotel properties here in the U.S. under a variety of brand names. And um, they uh, got a, a third-party research company 
to um, research the database for, for all the hotels. And there are some differences between the hotels in terms of who stays there and who doesn't. But um, this just shows you um, the kind of information. They did, they did surveys, and um, this is what they found out by talking to a you know, large number of people in the database. They can find out where they like to eat, where they like to shop, what they like to drink, what they like to do. And um, you can see the presentation on the left there, the deck on the left. And then, of course, uh, we're going out and we are selling um, access to the database to different advertisers. So, for instance, we show that um, these folks like to go to sporting events. They like to tailgate. They also like to barbecue at home. So we go to Omaha Steaks, okay, which you may have heard of. It's a big direct marketing company that sells meat. Um, direct and uh, try to get them interested in um, advertising or you know doing something with us, paying us to reach the choice database. Um, all right, now technically uh, next week I, I know I don't have any actual physical class, um, but your um, company presentations are due by the 21st, which I think is a Friday. I want a video of each team member. Um, there is a grading rubric in the project. You can find it. it basically, that means uh, what different qualities am I am I measuring each each presentation by or on? Um, you know, creativity, teamwork, things like that, and what percentage I give each one of those um, qualities. You might want to know that before you do your presentation, but I'm expecting video of each team member, you know, over the, whatever the deck is. And that's due the, tw the 21st. Um, we will uh, discuss it by the next week and kind of kick things around in, in discussions. Then I also want you to read for the 26th, chapters 5, 21, and 22. And again, these are the company presentations. And so what did we cover today? Uh, we talked about databases, um, talked about lists to some degree. We talked about CRM, I think a little bit. We'll do more of that uh, down the road, customer relationship management. Uh, but that's the CRM is where you segment customers and then develop plans to um, basically improve your relationship and deepen your relationship with the customers. So uh, that is uh, the end of this lecture, uh, lecture three. And lecture four, you'll be moving to, which is uh, about offers and some other things.